Fills can just be a 2D drafting tool or can also embellish the 3D symbolic attributes of things that we may draw. And this can be, fills can be placed manually or automatically. So in the toolbox underneath the document section we have the fill tool. If we left mouse click on this the palette opens up and over here we've got some general settings so we can define the line that goes around the outside of the fill. We can also define the pen we can choose a fill type and we can also create our own fill type. Then we have three options. We can link the fill to a project origin, link to a fill origin, and we can also use a distorted fill which is new for version 10. If I push OK and I'm going to select this fill here and if I open it up we can see at the moment it's linked to Project Origin. So I can't change the way the hatching is placed in that fill. However, if I select it, open it up and choose Link to Fill Origin, push OK. Once I've done that, I have this little fill handle that has been, that has been placed in the fill. Now if I left mouse click on the left hand side of that, I can move that handle to anywhere I like. And if this pattern represented floor tiles in a room, perhaps I might want it, the tiles to start from the bottom left hand corner so I move it there. Then if I left mouse click on the other fill I can drag that around to any angle that I like and I can change the angle of it. When you move this handle it doesn't change, it doesn't affect the proportion of the fill because it always springs back to this same length. So even if I made it shorter or longer. So let's just say I wanted to make these tiles at 45 degrees. So now we can work out roughly how our tiles will sit in there. Then finally, if I click on the Use Distorted Fill, I can left mouse click on that, push OK, and we get another set of handles. Over here, if I move that whole icon once again our point of origin moves with that corner node and I can also change the perspective of the fill just by moving these handles around. The nice thing about this is if I move these handles out it will also change the proportion along the length of these handles. So we can distort fills any way we like now. This is a new feature for version 10. If I left mouse click on the fill button one more time, I can also click on show area text. And if I push OK, here we can see that the area is now defined. If I select the fill and move it, that figure will update. So it's a good way to work out an area very quickly. And so that's just a straight 2D fill. So the fills that we've been playing around with at the moment are straight drafting fills. We can also have cover fills and cut fills. Cut fills are for when you cut an element in cross section. And a cover fill is basically for the fills of slabs or roofs, meshes and even zones on the floor plan. So we can actually create our own fills if we need to and that would be done through options, fill types and create new. If you want to know how to create a fill type have a look at the movie Create Fills. Now one other thing that's important to notice that all these fills are only editable like this when they're in vectorial view. So if I go to view, on screen view options, if I change that to a bitmap or deselect vectorial hatching we can see that now that's a bitmap pattern and if I click on the same option in the tool palette we go back to the vectorial hatching. So over here is an example of three different elements. Basically they're three slabs that are identical in size and material but the hatching is different. So if I select the first slab we'll see that it has no cover fill, but we can see the cross section fill is concrete reinforcement. The second fill, 
I've actually got cover fills selected and I've chosen a straight weatherboards type fill. The third one is exactly the same but I've chosen cover fills but I've also said to use the fill of the surface material which is tiles which is why this tile pattern like that. So they're all different but the materials are the same just the fills have been placed in three different ways. If I open the section elevation we can see that through the cross section all materials are the same. On top of that we have one more option that is available in ARCAD and new for this version we have new types of fills. We have a new radial grill and a linear gradient fill. So I'm going to leave it on the radial at the moment and if I push OK if I just draw a fill on my floor plan this is obviously an elevation from my model and I've just got all the colors on and if I select my gradient fill that I've just placed I've got a couple of little green circles in the middle which I can just left mouse click on and drag out and the second circle defines the midtones over here I can choose any pen color that I've got selected in my pen palette and I can also make my own colors if you like so they certainly got some nice options in there and very easily define a sunset I can also make it the linear fill push OK over here once again I've got a little victorial handle that I can choose and drag out and the longer I drag the vector the more subtle the midtones become and the transition is greater I can also drag that down below and move that around to the top I can also drag these vectors right out through the outside of my fill to make the effect even subtler so there's a nice way of improving your elevations in colour.